video orientation of a 2021 Dynamax Isada 5. I always start at the front, work my way around the side, back up the passenger side. I'll stop the video and start a second video. Um, start at the front, air filter. Not a lot I can show you up here besides where some of the fill is. Coolant, battery terminals. Oil fill, oil dipstick, transmission dipstick, brake fluid, power steering fluid, washer fluid, secondary battery. It's uh, two batteries on the chassis. Nice size ram on this. I like. I like the truck. We'll go around the side here. Tire PSI on this one is going to be inside the door. And it's going to be right here. 95 PSI for the front, 95 PSI for the rear. I like the look of this chassis. It is comfortable. Power mirrors. The top mirrors are the only ones that are going to be power. So top mirrors are power, bottom mirrors are manual. We'll jump down here because it is a diesel and because it is 2021, we have something called DEF, diesel exhaust fluid. It is something you're going to have to deal with all the time. It's not going to change. There's not going to be any, uh, nothing you can get away from that one. Um, with the diesel, you have to keep in mind that uh, DEF will need to be refilled. There is a gauge inside. It will tell you when it gets low. So keep in mind on that one. But that's where you fill it, it's just behind the door here. Inside this compartment, you're also going to notice the yellow cap there. That is the filled diesel. Uh, big thing is you can't remove the tank. You have to fill the tank from here. You also have an on off switch there instead of a valve. The switch up is on, down is off. We're gonna leave it on. Twist it over, put it down, and you're good to go. First compartment back is going to be mostly electrical stuff. All 12 volt. You have two battery disconnects in here, which run off your smart solar systems. Inverter that you'll that'll be running your TVs mostly, uh, your fridge. Um, not a whole lot more than uh, you'll probably be able to plug into just about everything in this coach with this size inverter. Battery disconnects on this. On the other hand, those are nice to have. You will need them. Um, Turn them off when you're storing it. That's about the only time you'll really be turning it off, but it is nice to have. You get a light here that is controlled by the application inside, the screen inside, transfer switch, and then slide out controller. A lot of other electrical stuff in here that I'm not gonna get into in this video. But it is nice. Compartment back is going to be your generator. The generator on this one is a 8,000 watt. It will run both your air conditioners. You can run it going down the street. You can run it basically anytime you want. You have, well, it's gonna be impossible to see. But you have 0.2 hours on it right now. That's basically just testing everything else we've done with it. There is a switch here, not that I can see it in my video, but I'll make it light up. Pushing down primes it. You hold it for about 20 to 30 seconds. And when you're done, basically what it does is pump fuel to the generator from your fuel tank and push up. There is a glow plug. It does take a second to start it. So be patient with it. I 
not terribly loud. Uh, you can hear it a little bit inside. Inside the building, it is very loud. On that note, there is a, you wanna wait about 30 seconds to a minute before it'll send power to the house. The big thing is you have a breaker switch here, off, on. I wish I could see it with my video a little better, but there's no light in here. The uh, switch is going to basically, if you ever pop the switch because you're running too many things, both ACs, a hair dryer, a coffee pot, a griddle, all those things at the same time, you could possibly pop this breaker. Um, this is usually the first place I tell people to check if their generator is running and they're not getting power. Always check here first. You do have coolant here. Again, I can't get quite a good video picture on this, but it is there. As well as your oil dipstick is right here as well, the yellow is. Uh, you want to do your first oil change at 50 hours, that's 5-0. Then 150 to 200 hours every oil change afterwards. But beyond that, that's pretty simple maintenance. Oil's underneath, oil dipstick's underneath. Most of your stuff that you're going to need is on this label here. At least your quantities and everything else. And it's pretty nice to have. Right behind your generator, we're looking at a hydraulic pump this is going to be for your levelers you always want to check it check the level when the jacks are up not when they're down right now it's at a pretty good level usually right about the bottom of that plug right there is where you want it and it's actually still in a healthy level right now wish i could see more but i can't and generator exhaust so if it's running don't put your leg on it it'll hurt You have two rear or four rear tires, and see if I can get a. There's one, and other one is in there somewhere. I can't see it with the phone, but it is in there. So you check your tire pressure there. Slide out. Diesel fill. You don't need to do anything other than low sulfur diesel only. That's what it says. Only time you're gonna find any other diesels is uh, when you're up high in the mountains. 50 amp plug. The plug's on the other side of the coach and I'll show you that when we get there. Wet bay. You do get a little bit of a sewage compartment here where you can store your sewage hose. It's not bad. You're gonna be a little limited in what you can fit in it. A little heater for down here, it's an electric heater. So you can actually keep uh, everything down here heated. It will help with uh, cold weather camping. Uh, when I say cold weather, anything anything below 32 degrees is considered cold weather. And then it still prefers if you're above 15 or 20 degrees. You have two low point drains here. Let's turn on some lights. Black tank flush. With the black tank flush, what you do is you hook your hose up to it with pressure. You put the, turn it on and let it spray inside. Big thing with that is make sure your black tank valve is open and you are draining or else what will happen is they'll fill the tank, you know, pressurize the tank once it's full, go to your toilet. If it doesn't run out your toilet in any way, shape or form, it'll start going to your roof. Uh, mostly because of the stink valve that, that's through there. It's a vent. Um, it will fill, it will flood, and it will rain down a really crappy day. And I mean that literally. City water connection. So the city water connection is gonna do basically everything you want it to do. You're gonna fill from here, you're gonna have pressure here, then you have a valve right next to it. That is going to be your fresh water fill. Right now it is sent to, set to city water uh, or normal. What you do is you turn that over down and it will fill your tank, turn it to the right like that and it will uh, pull from your tank or pull from the city water connection. You have satellite and cable, part cable. So if you have a, a tailgater or something, a satellite dish that you hold outside, perfect for that. Or if you get to the park and that park has cable, if you have your own coax, 
you can watch their cable on that. Outside shower, hot and cold. Not just in case you get, you know, what we're dealing with the black tank. Just in case you get the poo on you. And a nice shower head on it. Black tank, or black tank is going to be the black valve, or black handle. The gray tank is going to be the gray handle. Fairly simple. And there is a cap back there so you can drain from that point and drain out if you want to. Big thing with that is I always suggest uh, with a black tank, make sure you leave the black tank valve closed if you're at a full hookup campground with sewage. Mostly because what happens is you get a pyramid of uh, uh, solids in there. We don't want that. Uh, let it fill up mostly and then drain it. Um, gray tank you can leave open all the time. I'd still suggest leaving that closed just so you have something to rinse the excess uh, uh, Solids out of the hose Compartment behind it Compartment light in here is actually a little unique. It does have a switch, but it is also a motion sensor So if you're back here you can open the door and it will turn on, or else you can turn it off by the switch behind. Everything comes with a starter kit, 25 foot safe drinking hose, water pressure regulator, four rolls of RV marine toilet paper, a 10 foot sewage hose that will not fit in that storage container that comes with it, 15 drop-ins, and a 30 amp to 15 amp adapter. This is a 50 amp coach. It does come with a 50 to 30 amp adapter, which can also go down to 30 to 15 amp adapter. With a 15 amp adapter that you normally plug into your house, make sure you do not run your air conditioner. It will hurt your air conditioner. Especially if you try to run both, you'll pop a breaker and you will damage the AC, even though it doesn't seem like it right away. The drop-ins are for the black tank. That's gonna be a big one for keeping uh, the odor down, breaking down the solids, the toilet paper, uh, whatever else might be in the toilet. What I suggest to people is take a five gallon bucket, fill it with four gallons of water, drop one of the pods in there. It looks like a Tide Pod, so don't eat them. That is a must, do not eat them. <laughs> Let it dilute, pour it down the toilet, and you won't have such a bad deodorant, or no help with deodorizing, and again, breaking down solids back here this is a nice storage compartment it is large and you can probably fit a nice size kayak in here <clears throat> we do have a light switch here and generator start so we can start and stop the generator here do compartment heat which is right in front of it just for the wet bay water pump awning light uh, driver's side or driver side security light which is right above my head so if I push that button so I'm going to turn that one on. And then you have cargo light, which will turn off or on all the cargo lights that aren't these ones. Make sure that's on. And then you have a porch light. Beyond that, nice size compartment. I'm going to leave that on so you can see that when you come in and pick it up. I do like the mud flap on this, the uh, rock guard. That's pretty nice. There are two cameras on this, one that aims towards the horizon, one that aims closer to the bumper. The one that aims in the horizon is the one you're gonna see when you put it in reverse. You get a seven-way plug and a four-way plug. And then your weight capacities are right here. So that's telling me 10,000 pound weight capacity, 750 pound tongue weight. Nice size hitch. LEDs everywhere. That is nice. Door is locked at the moment. Push the center, pops open. Oh. Again, motion sensor on that one. There's a 30 foot 50 amp cord. It does come with a 50 to 30 amp adapter. With that, you can run one air conditioner. 
but do not run both. Again, that will damage. Twist lock on that one, which goes on over there. Two 110 outlets here, but pretty nice. A little bit of storage compartment. The reason why this one is uh, lined the way it is because it actually goes through to the other side. Um, actually, to the other side to the wet bay. But you have your gray tank and your black tank here as well. You can see those pretty nicely. Below that, we have a propane quick connect. Oh, I'm trying to see through the phone. Right there. It is just basically a quick connect like quick connect like you'd see on an air compressor uh, but that is propane not air so if you have an external grill you can definitely hook that up and not have to deal with uh, having to bring around extra tanks water heater open that up there is a couple ways to do things here one you want to drain it anytime you're storing it for a little while how you do that is right here, push up, pull. You see the little plug there. Let's make sure there's no pressure. Oh. But that will drain it. Pretty simple there. Uh, anything outside of that, there is a switch here. This is how you're gonna turn it on and off. Up is eco, down is comfort. There is a manual to explain what they both do, and I would really highly suggest you read the manual on that one. Eco is going to use uh, less propane, Comfort's going to use a little more propane, but a little less water. So, beyond that, there is only one switch here, and that's all you need. Refrigerator, that's just behind it. Uh, twist these off, pull for them here. And then you take that off, clean behind there once a year. Uh, furnace, it says it gets hot. Don't touch it. 110 outlets, HDMI and coax. So if you wanna bring your bedroom TV outside, you can hook it up there. Another compartment. Big thing with this is there it comes with extra wires. The extra wires were for the chassis before they put the motor home on it. And then there is a grill cover there as well for cold weather uh, traveling. It is a diesel, they tend to run colder. Beyond that, yeah, and mirrors. You do have a nice awning out here. I'm gonna run that out before I open up, uh, before I go inside and do the rest of the video. But I will stop this video and start a second one. Extend. We'll turn on the lights. Running light. I like the lights on the arms. I'm not gonna make that one go out all the way. All I had to do was push extend again and it stopped it. But porch light, cargo lights, awning lights. living room and porch which will turn on the handle as well master light off on and then your step lock that's a big one I get a lot of questions on that step lock off will allow it to stay out you turn step back on oh maybe I'm wrong oh this one's by the main door sorry step goes in step goes out you turn the switch back off step stays I put, put the wrong switch do I have the ignition on I could have the ignition on Okay, it must have the ignition on. But either way, it does stay out when you turn that off. Unless the ignition is on, that is a safety feature. 
or retract the awning. All right, so that's the conclusion of our exterior of the video. Um, so I will see you in the next video and I will go through all the interior stuff.